Hello everybody, I am Lukezilla, and welcome back to another episode of Insanicraft. Now, when we last left off, we basically began our construction project, well, more like our demolition project, of trying to flatten out this main central hill in what is to be the center of the shopping district of the Insanicraft server, and I basically realized that uh, I would probably need about two weeks Two weeks of non-stop grinding, non-stop digging, mining, t in order to break down this entire mound, just flatten this lump down to the ground. And so, I basically decided to take on that old Minecraft moniker of work smarter and not harder. So, what is the solution? An explosive one. Yep. I decided that... In order to basically level this area to the ground, I am going to build a flying TNT duper. And I basically have searched around online, and I think that I found a relatively simple design in order to basically get things going. But first, I'm going to need to go and uh, collect some slime blocks. Yep, so I'm going to need a whole lot of slime balls, and I'm going to need a whole lot of gunpowder. And fortunately for me, I know exactly where to go to get some. Let's go. Okay, everybody, I think that I've done enough legwork on that for right now. So, anyways, now let's see if we can actually, like, uh, break down the materials of what I'm going to do for this, um... Uh... Hi, chicken. <laughs> Hi, <you> little chicken. <laughs> let's see if I can break down the materials for this, uh, flying TNT duper. So... Let's check our handy dandy redstone box. Alright everyone, now that I've collected up all my materials, I figure that the best way to do it is to build it. So, alright everybody, that is one module of my TNT Flying Duper built. This, and uh, those of you who are fans of Hermitcraft, you probably recognize this design. This basically is the design that has recently been used over on Hermitcraft by the one, the only, the GOAT, Doc M77, my personal inspiration, my would-be mentor, and my future rival as we battle for the dominance and control of this planet. Coming for you, GOAT man. We will duel one day, GOAT father. Anyways, this basically is the flying machine that will... Well, once it's done, I'll have to set up the return stations over there. Simple blocks of obsidian in the sky that will cause this thing to fly back to starter. And this will be only one of the four modules that will go with it. So, well, I say four because I did four in the creative world, but I have a feeling that I'm going to need a whole lot more because this is a much wider area than I did initial testing. So... I'm going to get to work on building all those other modules. I'm not going to basically record myself doing that because I think that uh, building this one took long enough already. So I'll just uh, get back to you guys when I've got all the others built. And once we do, we're going to prime these things and we're going to set them free. So I'll catch you guys once I got that built. Be right back. And built up the... T the world devastator here is complete all the flying tnt dupers are set up and everything so um <clears throat> tested this out on the creative on the creative world several times so i should have them all properly spaced out <laughs> so let's uh head on up there and uh, take a look at it shall we so right so right now i've built in some extra obsidian to prevent everything from basically like just uh, uh bouncing <clears throat> from going forward before i have had a chance to truly get everything ready yet pretty sure that these obsidian blocks have to remain because those will basically like be the indication for these parts to basically like stop and get pushed uh, back forward as well as these ones back here i've also got some obsidian blocks basically like uh, set up over there they should be directly lined up to be ready to bounce everything back so that when the flying machines get there, they'll basically know to make the return. Pretty sure that the construct is basically going to get its front half blown up, but that's okay. That construct was literally just supposed to be a temporary thing. So, 
The idea is that this thing pushes forward and the TNT blocks then get pushed onto the horn coral fans and then they get duplicated. So effectively explosive death will rain down from here as this machine trudges and moves along forward. No idea how I survived that, but I don't really care all that much. <clears throat> right, so, effectively speaking, everything should all be set up to my specifications. Once I throw this switch, it should send the redstone signal all the way down, gets passed along by these repeaters, should basically carry it all the way to the end, activating all the TNT dupers and the flying machines as well basically push them along and they should basically rain a steady fire of tnt all over the lump and pretty soon the lump should be well no more we're basically gonna use this to flatten everything out <clears throat> the problem is is that there's one last step that's effectively missing one last thing that i need to do because Effectively speaking, I built all this stuff up, but I certainly didn't want it to activate without my consent, which is also basically why I added the obsidian there as well. I've got everything backed up, so just in case something goes wrong, but effectively speaking, right now, the way that these TNT dupers work is that nothing has officially primed the system. Effectively, the system is loaded, but it's not armed, so to speak. The triggering mechanism is... Minecarts. So, gotta put that there. <coughs> gotta put that there. I gotta say, I much prefer this design as opposed to the tunnel bore that uh, Mumbo Jumbo used in Season 7 because, effectively speaking, you had to do a whole thing where you had to push that minecart into position. And even Doc basically like has some uh, designs where he has to do it like that. Don't really necessarily care for it. I like to just be able to place the minecart and automatically prime the system without having to go through that rigmarole. So, I'm not exactly 100% sure on this, but I am going to leave that one block of obsidian there. I'm going to die. I am going to fall to my death. Right, so, now just got to basically go out and take out all the extra obsidian that's blocking the system. And got to go back in and add all these minecarts. Oh, so according to my calculations, if I basically did math right, I should have enough iron on me to go ahead and get those carts made. So I'm going to basically like fly on over to the nearest crafting bench. Going to get that all taken care of. Carefully. Yeah, when you're working with redstone, you can't really take any chances. Okay, I'm back, and I'm just about to install the last two minecarts. Okay, so just going to put that there, and I'm going to put that there, and the World Devastator should be ready. Now, so I'm finally going to get ready to launch this thing. The World Devastator that's going to eat up this lump of the, sh of the spawn area, which will eventually be the center of the entire shopping district. Now, the one thing that I'm worried about is that, well, let me just illustrate. 
this thing is basically intentionally designed to work when there's at least at, at least 10 blocks above whatever it is you're basically trying to destroy or dig out now the thing about it is is that i built this while there was definitely undoubtedly 10 blocks beneath it more even but you go up the hill and well <laughs> you get on top of the lump <laughs> And this is only about seven blocks. So what I'm hoping is, is that by the time it gets to this point, all of this slope will have been devastated to the point where it's not just dropping TNT at this height. And instead, all of this will have already been, most of this will have already been destroyed because the fear is, is that an explosion goes off too close to the TNT up there. It will basically destroy those TNT dupers, and I will have done all of this for absolutely nothing. So, anyways, let's get ready to finally launch this thing. I've been waiting to do it for a long time, and the best part about it is, is that, well, uh, I've mentioned this in another part of the video that I think I've lost the footage for, or I've cut that part of the footage out. Effectively speaking, I wanted to do this while I was pulling a prank on LT, but the thing about it is, is that I... <coughs> Hold on. Sorry, need to take a drink here. <sighs> Much better. So, I have finally taken, become intrepid enough to purchase a second Minecraft account to use as a camera account, which I will be using for a third party, a third person, a third person, a, th a third person time lapse for this machine as I unleash it onto the world. And I can't wait for it. I can't wait to capture that footage. So. All that being said, let's finally launch this thing. Ready? All right. World Eater launch in three, two, one. There it goes. Holy crap, that's a lot of TNT. And it looks like it's already messed up. I honestly forgot how efficient this actually was because look at this damage. Look at this destruction. Okay, so... Obviously, mistakes were made, but that's why I have almost this entire thing back, why I have the entire server backed up, because now the most important thing is that now is that I gotta stop it, so... And what I find ironic is, is that that blasted lump is still largely intact. That that really bothers me. So looks like I'm gonna have to get the backup of this world booted up and I'm gonna have to move this thing upwards by a few blocks. So Might as well get started. Okay, everybody, I am back. Uh, it's been been a couple of days since uh, I basically like had that last test run, and I've actually tested the machine uh, several times, uh, several test runs on it, and, well, effectively speaking, I realized that uh, this wasn't going to work as simply and as easily as I had wanted it to, and effectively speaking, there was going to be a whole lot more problems, so as you can see up there, I have already gotten, I've repositioned the obsidian pillars to basically be in different positions because I realized that if the machine basically was allowed to pretty much just go back and forth across the entire area I was not only not going to level out the lump I was going to get a massive crater in the entire area and I don't want a crater I just want the land I just want that lump gone so that I can smooth out the rest of the land so 
and I also realized that, well, effectively speaking, like, I had to basically raise it up more than, I basically raised it up about uh, 20 blocks. I tried raising it up about 10 blocks the first time, because I figured that that would be more than enough to do it, but as it turns out, uh, that didn't work either because the TNT some of it would it drops so quickly that sometimes the explosion will rocket the next set of TNT upward and that will cause and that will sometimes cause either the TNTs in the flying machines or the flying machines themselves to blow up so effectively speaking that is how that's why basically I made the decision that instead of setting this all up to just one timer and what the what's this what what are you you're... You're a pig. I know, pig. I miss him, too. you on your way. Anyway, I decided that this thing, it's a, is not going to basically, uh... I wanted... <clears throat> I wanted to just throw a switch and then let this thing do its work, but, uh, that isn't gonna isn't gonna work because the more I tested it the more I realized that having setting all these TNT machines off at once that was basically rather dangerous it uh, it basically was guaranteed for failure because one way or another they would get out of sync one way or another someone's TNT would get rocketed up and destroy somebody else's so it's much safer to basically just do this one module at a time, one flying machine at a time, and, well, that'll take care of it. So, I've gone ahead and marked out all the positions of the obsidian, where they need to be. I've already tested this on this map. I've got a backup of this map rearing and ready to go. So, I think it's finally time that we actually did something about this. So, <coughs> You guys just sit tight. I'm going to go set up my cam I've got my camera account all set up and I'm going to get ready to pull the trigger. All right, so <clears throat> that worked uh, as about as well as can be expected. And now I'm just gonna. I technically don't have to do this since basically, like, uh, I could really just uh, leave this light turned on and these things won't move. But considering, uh, considering that I have to dismantle these things at some point, it'll just be easier to basically just plug these things in with obsidian in order to prevent them from moving. So. That's one down. <coughs> and taking a look, I would say that this is pretty much almost perfect. It's probably the closest that we can get to being perfect. Because now that uh, that section of the lump is gone, I could just basically just fill this in. Basically have like a network of tunnels down here and just basically connect this line of dirt with that one. And now we get to the more interesting parts. Let's uh, get on up there and we'll do it. One at a time. So.
Okay, I would say that that worked out pretty well. As you could see, there was uh, one brief moment there where one of the mid, uh, one of the middle TNT uh, machines, they basically got set off again by accident, and I'm surprised that it didn't break anything. I mean, that was a complete mistake on my part, but let's go survey the damage. Let's see, uh... Look at that. Would you look at that? All of this area completely devastated. Mined out. <coughs> All that's left to do is just do the cleanup and make it look pretty. And it looks like the <laughs> looks like the construct has just been devastated. But the best news is is that let relatively all the land back here, the land that I want to use is kind of like the, sort of like uh, the standard for how uh, flat that I want this land to be. Basically at this level, yep, this level is largely still intact. So all I'll need to do is start covering all this up with grass and dirt, make it all look nice and pretty. So anyways, that is good. I mean... Let's see, that middle TNT duper, the, that one up there. It got a second run, so... Hmm. I'm guessing that this is the damage that it caused, like it's much deeper than all the others, so... That's a shame, but... Unfortunately, there's not really much that can be done about it now, so... But anyways, now that I've finally gotten this entire area devastated and the lump is almost completely gone, like, let's take a look over here. See this area over here, this last remaining section of lump, I could basically mine through this no problem. I'll probably have this gone within like 5-10 minutes, so it'll be no problem for me. Well, the next time you guys see me, all of this will probably be swept up and clean, and I will have covered it up in this nice, luscious mycelium biome grass. And it's going to look very nice, very beautiful. It's going to be the place to put the center of your town square for a shopping district that would make Hermitcraft proud. And the construct is going away. I mean, it was a good, funny idea for a prank, but it's outlived its usefulness, at least now that the, se the series has started. So, I'll probably collect up all these resources and move them to a secure location. But, after that, who knows? It was fun, it was nice while it lasted, but in the meantime... That is all the time that we have for this video. If you liked it, please leave a comment on the comment section below. Be sure to like it, share it with your friends. If you want to keep up to date with more Insanity Craft coming at you in the future, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.